All right, let's dive into this AITO M9. We've got a whole bunch of articles here, Batado, Mark Lines, the Manila Times, even Huawei Central. Seems like everyone's talking about this Chinese luxury SUV. Yeah, it's really interesting to see, uh, you know, AITO is a pretty new name in the game, yeah. but they're already making the big luxury brands kind of nervous. And I think a big part of that is they're not afraid to mix like the classic luxury feel with all this super advanced tech. Yeah, and they're racking up the pre-orders too. One of these articles mentioned over 160,000 in just 10 months. Yeah. It's got to say something. What is it about the M9 that's got people so hyped? Well, one thing that really jumps out is AITO did this crazy road trip thing, drove a whole fleet of M9s, M7s, and M5s all the way from their factory in Chongqing, China, to the Paris Motor Show. Hold on. From China to Paris. Yeah, 15,000 kilometers. 15,000 kilometers. In 38 days. That's insane. That's not just a test drive. It's like a whole expedition. Yeah, and, and get this. They weren't just like out for a Sunday drive. They were using their advanced driver assistance system. That's the AD for over 8,800 kilometers of that trip. Whoa, more than half the distance. So they're really putting their money where their mouth is yeah. when it comes to intelligent driving tech. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They're definitely not shy about showing off what they can do. So they're making a statement, that's for sure. But let's get down to brass tacks. Uh -huh. What kind of intelligent features are we actually talking about here? Okay, so one that's been making a lot of noise is their Phoenix Dance in the Sky welcome lights. That sounds familiar. You walk up to your M9. And these projection headlights, they do this whole like light show, almost like a phoenix taking flight. Oh, yeah. I, I read about that. That's like straight out of a sci-fi movie. It's pretty wild. But are those headlights more than just a gimmick? You know, something flashy to get people's attention? Well, that's the question, isn't it? I mean, on the one hand, yeah, it's definitely eye-catching. But I think it also shows how car companies are starting to think differently about how technology and design can work together. So it's not just about function, it's about the whole experience. Exactly, and that idea, that whole experience thing, it's all over the M9. Like, take the Harmony cockpit, for example. It's this triple screen setup, like a command center from the future. I bet you feel like you're piloting a spaceship. Uh-huh, <laughs> yeah, something like that. And it's all powered by Huawei's Harmony OS. So it's super user-friendly, everything connects seamlessly. They're really going for that smart luxury vibe. Smart luxury, uh, that sounds fancy, but what does it actually mean? What are the real world benefits? Well, I think it comes down to a few things. For one, they're not just throwing tech at the problem. They're thinking about comfort, practicality, how all these things work together. Like, for example, they've got these Shiryun seats. They're designed with 10 layers for maximum comfort. Yeah, layers. Yeah, they say it feels like you're floating on a cloud. I gotta try that. And then there's the trunk space. Uh -huh. In the five-seater version, you can fit four 28-inch suitcases plus a carry-on. Yeah, it's huge. So they're not sacrificing practicality for luxury. It's all part of the package. And they're not slacking on performance either. Oh, absolutely not. The M9 has some serious power under the hood. You've got the pure electric version right. and the extended range version. The pure electric has a dual motor layout. Front motor delivers 160 kilowatt, Rear motor kicks in 230 kilowatts. And what does that translate to in terms of speed? Zero to 100 kilometers in 4.3 seconds. 4.3 seconds. That's supercar territory. It's quick. What about the extended range version for people who aren't ready to go fully electric yet? Yeah, that's a smart option. It uses a small internal combustion engine to extend the range up to 1,300 kilometers. 1,300. Yeah. Imagine driving from, say, New York to Chicago like on a that. single tank. That's incredible. Seems like they've really thought of everything. They're definitely trying to cover all the bases. Right. And that attention to detail, it speaks to their ambition to become a global player in the auto world. Hmm, that's interesting. We should definitely dig into that more. Yeah, definitely a lot to unpack there. All right, well, let's pick up this thread after a quick break. We'll be back to dive deeper into AITO's global ambitions and what it all means for the industry. Sounds good. So yeah, AITO's global ambitions, we were just talking about that before the break. They made a pretty big splash at the Paris Motor Show, and these articles mention the Philippines and the UAE as potential markets they're looking at. Yeah, it definitely seems like they've got their eyes on the prize, but going up against those big luxury brands right out of the gate, that seems like a risky move, doesn't it? It's a tough market, no doubt, but they seem to have a pretty clear strategy. They're not afraid to position themselves as a premium brand, but they're also being smart about it. So what's their secret weapon? How are they going to win over customers mm -hmm. who are already loyal to like Mercedes or BMW? Well, remember that partnership with Huawei. 
That's a big part of it. It's not just about branding. They're really leveraging Huawei's technology, especially their expertise in intelligent driving and connectivity. It's like a fusion of AITO's automotive know-how and Huawei's tech muscle. So it's not just a Huawei logo on the steering wheel. It's about baking that technology into the DNA of the car. Exactly. And remember those super comfy Shun seats we talked about? It's not just about tech. They're delivering on the classic luxury expectations too. The M9 is spacious, it's luxurious. It hits all those classic notes of a premium SUV. Okay, so they've got cutting edge tech, luxurious comfort. Yep. And a design that stands out. What about the price tag? Are they aiming for the ultra luxury segment or something a little more accessible? It seems like they're trying to find that sweet spot, a price point that's competitive with the big names, but without sacrificing quality, making premium accessible. That's a smart strategy to attract a wider audience. Makes sense. But breaking into new markets, it's not just about having a great product, right? Right. There are cultural differences, regulations, the whole challenge of building brand awareness from scratch. You're absolutely right. It's a multifaceted challenge for sure. And it seems like AIT is approaching it very thoughtfully. They're partnering with local distributors, doing market research, tailoring their marketing to different audiences. They're doing their homework and adapting their approach based on the specific market. So they're not just assuming that what works in China will work everywhere else. They're taking a more nuanced, localized approach. That's smart. But what about quality and reliability? Some people might still have those old stereotypes about Chinese-made products. It's true. Those perceptions can be hard to shake. But the reality is, the Chinese auto industry has come a long way. AITU in particular, they've been topping the sales charts in China in the luxury SUV segment, even outperforming some of the big international brands. Wow, so they're not just riding the made in China wave, they're actually exceeding expectations. They're setting a new standard. That's impressive. But the auto world is always changing. What are they doing to stay ahead of the game? Innovation is key. They recently launched a five-seater version of the M9, giving consumers more options. And they're constantly refining their intelligent driving system. It's not a static product. They're constantly iterating and improving. So it's not just launch and forget. They're committed to continuous improvement. Exactly, and that's what makes AITO so interesting to watch. They're not just another car company. They're ambitious, they're innovative, and they're shaking things up. Their story feels like a microcosm of the larger changes happening in the Chinese auto industry. It's not just about affordability anymore. It's about quality, innovation, and a desire to compete on a global level. You're absolutely right. The M9's success is a testament to how much the Chinese auto industry has evolved. It's like they've raised the bar for everyone, pushing the entire industry forward. Absolutely. But this rise of the Chinese auto industry, especially with companies like AITO leading the charge, it has implications beyond just cars, doesn't it? You're hitting on a really important point. It's a sign of China's growing economic and technological influence. It's like a microcosm of China's emergence as a global powerhouse. But what are some of the key factors that have contributed to this rapid rise of the Chinese auto industry? Well, there are a few things at play. First, the Chinese government has been very supportive of developing the electric vehicle industry. They've implemented incentives and subsidies to encourage both manufacturers and consumers to embrace EVs. That makes sense, considering exactly. the global shift towards sustainable transportation. Exactly. And second, Chinese automakers have been very quick to adopt new technologies, especially in areas like battery tech and intelligent driving systems. They're not just playing catch up. They're actively shaping the future of the industry. So they're not just followers. They're becoming leaders in these key areas of innovation. Absolutely. And third, let's not forget about the sheer size of the Chinese market. They have a huge domestic market to tap into, which gives them the scale and resources to invest heavily in research and development. So they've got this perfect storm of favorable conditions, government support, a hunger for new technology, and a massive market to fuel their growth. No wonder they're making such waves. But let's bring it back to AITO for a second. They've got a great product, a clear vision, and they're making moves on the global stage. But what are some of the challenges they might face as they try to become a truly global automotive powerhouse? That's the million dollar question. And I think one of the biggest hurdles for AITO and a lot of other Chinese automakers is overcoming certain perceptions that still exist in some markets. You mean those outdated stereotypes about Chinese made products being inferior? Yeah, unfortunately, those haven't completely gone away. But the reality is, as we've been discussing, 
AITO's track record speaks for itself. Their vehicles are high quality, technologically advanced, but changing perceptions takes time and consistent effort. So how can they break through those preconceived notions and build trust with consumers who might be hesitant about a relatively new brand? It's about building a reputation for excellence, and that takes time and consistency. They need to keep producing high-quality vehicles that meet or exceed global standards. Transparency is also key, being open about their manufacturing processes, their quality control measures, their commitment to continuous improvement. It's about showing, not just telling, that they're the real deal. So it's a long game, building trust through consistent quality and open communication. But it's not just about overcoming negative perceptions, is it? There are also some exciting opportunities that AITO can capitalize on. You're absolutely right. And one of the biggest opportunities, as we've touched on before, is the growing global demand for electric vehicles. Consumers are becoming more and more aware of the environmental benefits of EVs mm -hmm. and governments around the world are enacting policies to encourage their adoption. AITO is entering the market at the perfect time with a product that's perfectly aligned with these trends. Their super range extender technology seems particularly well suited to address those concerns that some people have about range limitations or charging infrastructure. Exactly. It's a great solution for people who want to go electric, but don't want to feel tied to a charging station. And let's not forget about that Huawei partnership. It gives them access to cutting edge technology in areas like 5G connectivity, artificial intelligence, cloud computing. Well, it's like they have this built-in advantage. Yeah. A direct line to the latest and greatest tech. They can create cars that are not only beautiful and luxurious, but also incredibly intelligent and connected. Precisely. And that's a powerful combination that resonates with today's consumers who expect their vehicles to be extensions of their digital lives. So they're not just building cars. They're building intelligent, connected hubs that fit seamlessly into our modern tech-driven lifestyles. That's a great way to put it. But we also have to remember that with all this incredible technology comes a responsibility to use it ethically and thoughtfully. As cars become more intelligent and connected, we need to be mindful of things like data privacy and the potential for algorithmic bias. That's a crucial point. We can't just blindly embrace technology without considering the potential downsides. Absolutely. And it's not just about data privacy. We also need to be aware of the potential for bias in the algorithms that power these intelligence systems. Those are important considerations. We need to make sure that the future of mobility is not only innovative and exciting, but also ethical and inclusive. Okay, so let's shift gears for a minute and talk about AITO's future plans. What can we expect from them in the coming years? Well, they're definitely not slowing down. They're actively expanding their product portfolio. And they recently unveiled the AITO M8, a new SUV that sits between the M7 and M9 in terms of size and price. Oh, yeah, the M8. I'd heard some rumors about that one. What can you tell us? Details are still a bit scarce, but from what we've gathered, it's expected to be a stylish and technologically advanced SUV, targeting a slightly younger, more tech-savvy demographic. So they're filling in the gaps in their lineup, offering a wider range of options to appeal to different buyers. Exactly. And they're not limiting themselves to SUVs either. There's talk of a sedan and a minivan in development further diversifying their product portfolio. Wow, they're going all in. That makes sense if they're serious about becoming a major player on the global stage. Absolutely. They need to offer a variety of vehicles to compete in different segments. And speaking of the global stage, their expansion plans are moving full steam ahead. We've already mentioned the Philippines and the UAE, but those are just the first steps. They're actively exploring other markets in Asia, Europe, even North America. That's a bold move especially considering the competition in those markets. What makes them so confident they can succeed? I think their confidence comes from their unique offering, that blend of technology, luxury, and value. They believe it will resonate with consumers worldwide. They're not just building cars for China. They're building cars for the world. It's an exciting vision. It'll be fascinating to see how it all plays out. But success on a global scale, it takes more than just a great product. What are some of the key factors that will determine AITO's future success? I think their ability to continue innovating, adapting to changing market conditions, and building a strong global brand presence will be crucial. They need to stay ahead of the curve in terms of technology, tailor their offerings to different markets, and cultivate a brand identity. That resonates with a global audience. It's a complex challenge, but they've shown they're up to the task. So it's a combination of staying true to their core values, of innovation and quality, 
while also being flexible and responsive to different markets. Sounds like a recipe for success. But as with any ambitious venture, there are always risks. What are some of the potential pitfalls that AITO needs to be mindful of? One of the biggest risks is overextending themselves, expanding too quickly into too many markets without a solid foundation, could strain their resources and dilute their brand identity. So it's about choosing their battles wisely and making sure each step is calculated and sustainable. Exactly. And another risk is becoming complacent. The auto industry is incredibly competitive and technology is advancing at a breakneck pace. AITO needs to maintain that focus on innovation, constantly pushing the boundaries. They can't afford to rest on their laurel. It's a constant race to innovate. Absolutely. But that's also what makes this industry so exciting. It's a world of possibilities. AITO, with its ambitious vision and innovative spirit, is at the forefront of this evolution. It'll be fascinating to see what they achieve. All right, well, let's take a moment to reflect on everything we've learned about AITO and the M9. And when we come back, We'll wrap up this deep dive with some final thoughts and predictions. Okay, so we're back. And I gotta say, I'm still kind of blown away by the AITO M9. Yeah, it's a pretty impressive piece of machinery. Those headlights, man. The phoenix dance in the sky, you don't see that every day. It's definitely a statement. <laughs> but it's more than just flashy lights, right? It shows you how AITO is approaching this whole luxury thing. They're thinking outside the box. Yeah, it's not just about leather seats and fancy gadgets anymore. It's about the whole experience, the technology, the comfort, the feeling you get when you're behind the wheel. And speaking of technology, that partnership with Huawei. That's a game changer. It gives them access to some of the most advanced tech in the world. And they're not afraid to use it. And let's not forget, they've already proven themselves in the Chinese market. Which is no small feat. So they've got the experience, the technology, the vision. It really makes you wonder. Could AITO be the brand that finally bridges the gap between East and West in the global auto market? It's an interesting question. I think they definitely have the potential. They're shaking things up, bringing something new to the table. And they're doing it with a global mindset, thinking about different cultures, different markets. It's an exciting time for the auto industry. Yeah. And AITO is right at the forefront. They're a company to watch, that's for sure. Well, that about wraps it up for our deep dive into the AITO M9. It's been a fascinating conversation. I agree. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, keep those wheels turning.